G'day. This is a quick film on how to fit a dual fuel carburetor to your petrol generator. Or as it says on this one, gasoline. So what we've got is a Chinese dual fuel LPG petrol carburetor. And we'll go through fitting that up and getting it commissioned onto this old generator that I had lying around. So today I had arrived in our mail system one of these guys. So this is the dual fuel carburetor I'm talking about, which can fit on the little Spitfire generator. Now these carburetors, so this is the carburetor here, petrol, and this area here is for the LPG. So I'll go through the operation of this in a minute. But these are standard carburetors for a Honda 160 engine. And what we have on that generator is a Chinese copy of a Honda engine. And it's, it's a 5.5 horsepower and it's a SFE160 which is the same as a Honda 160. And the carburetor on the Honda 160 engine is exactly the same as carburetor on this because it's all a copy. So you're looking at the wee carburetor there and you'll see some likenesses with what we've got from China with the LPG dual fuel one. So the one we've got up there on the bench has an extra part down here for the LPG and it has a feed pipe which goes in the side here. So I'll go have a look at that now. So we're looking at the same thing but different. So this is the feed pipe for the LPG into the side and this is the normal Honda 160 carburetor petrol. In theory this should just be a clean swap out and all I have to do is mount this side onto the engine and this side onto the air cleaner. And down the bottom here we've got our LPG feed that comes from a standard barbecue LPG regulator like this. I can't remember, I think it's like half an atmosphere pressure, it's very low what these deliver, to the point where you put your finger over the end and the gas flow will just stop. And so, gas is stepped down in pressure from a gas bottle and the regulator comes through the pipe and we have to attach this pipe to here. As you can see, we've got an incompatibility problem, but, but don't fear. I've got another hose here, so I'm just going to cut this hose off here and mount the orange hose onto the regulator and banjo clamp into here. We'll run through the basic operation of the carburetor. So this is the intake side which comes from the air cleaner and the little plate there you see is the choke plate. It comes with the lever, the same as what's on the generator. That's the choke off so you can see right through the carburetor. Half choke, full choke. You use that when you're starting it on petrol. This is the petrol feed from the fuel tank. It comes through a series of jets, and this is the throttle butterfly. And this is hooked up to the governor on the generator. This is the idle screw. So that's throttle plate closed, and you can set the idle on the idle screw. That's about it really. There's a mixture of screw here for idle and once you get up through the revs the throttle opens up and you'll use some secondary jets which are, where's my pointy device? Okay we found our pointy thing. So this sets the idle, idle jet which is this little hole here and behind the throttle plate Where's my lens? There it goes. You'll see down in here, there are some secondary jets. As we open it up, there's a few along the wall there, just some tiny little holes. And they are the transition jets from idle to full throttle. And as we open it up, might be a bit tricky to see, but down in there, there we go. That guy, that little brass stem sticking up, comes from the float valve, and that is the main emulsion or power jet that you use for running at a full full whammy. For the LPG side of it, 
we have this guy here. And because we're delivering gas at a very low pressure under here, this guy stops the gas flowing out here unless it can see a vacuum. And the vacuum is caused by a venturi effect through the carburetor. When it has a vacuum, it will pull gas up this pipe and into the intake of the engine in this little brass jet here. And that's it. It's very, very simple. This helps with the mixture adjustment if you're running between CNG, LPG. What else we got on here? Now, because you can run dual fuel, either petrol or LPG, you've got this hose down here. This is a drain for the carburetor. So when you go to change from petrol to LPG, before you change over, stop the generator, turn the petrol off on the generator tank, drain the fuel out of it. So that's in the off position. So as you turn that on, it will drain the float chamber of any fuel. Then you can turn on your LPG, push this button, which primes a little bit of gas, pushes the diaphragm down in here, which allows gas to come through. Normally this diaphragm is pushed down by vacuum being pulled on here, which allows it to deliver. Give it a little push for a minute, and that'll allow to prime the engine with a little bit of LPG, pull the lever, and away it should go. That's the theory anyway. So we're going to work through and mount this up now and get it going. So we're looking at the side of the generator now. So we've got our petrol shut off, fuel delivery pipe for the petrol into the carburetor, which is hiding around here. So to get this carburetor off, what we're going to do is take off the air filter box. And there are a series of bolts to get that off. So we'll get the air cleaner box off, get the carburetor off, and we'll fit up the LPG one. So we've got our air cleaner cover off. We've undone the four screws on the outside. Pull out the filter element. Wop off your cover here. And we now have two bolts here, which hold the carburetor air cleaner cover on. And there's another bolt on the back down here which we need to undo as well. Okay, we've got our belts undone. We'll take that cover off here for back of the air cleaner. And you can see the carburetor there. So we have to take that off. Now, this is your choke, which just comes off like that. This operation is like that. Choke off and the governor. The throttle is over the back here. There's a spring with a little lever on it. So how do you get that off? Well, you really need to slide the carburetor off to get at that. Also, you need to disconnect your fuel down here. Slide your carburetor off. Grab your gaskets on the way through. And as you lift it out, it'll twist out the throttle at the top there. And you can slide the throttle lever up from the governor. So that one comes off, and then you've got this little governor spring there, and that stops it from hunting. Gives you a little bit of tension on the governor all the time, on the throttle. There we go. So that's off, and carburetor off. Simple as that. There you go. We'll compare that to what we've got up there. compare the old carburetor to what we've got on the bench behind us with the new one. Alright, so you should be able to see some immediate similarities here. Float pole is a little bit different, but the rest of it is much the same. So, virtually the same. In fact, it is the same. Right, so we're all plumbed up for LPG. We've got our fitting on here, LPG hose, connection, sealant, regulator, gas bottle fitting. We'll put the carby and LPG unit onto the generator now. But before we do that, I just wanted to have a look at the feed pipe from the LPG 
unit into the carburetor and I want to understand the screw function here. So this is a mixture screw by the looks of it because if we look down the middle there you can see the tip. It sort of has a little bit of a point on it but if you wind it in it'll get leaner, wind it out, it'll get richer. So we'll put that back on there and we're done. So our new LPG carb goes on the same as the old one came off. Just line up the holes, slide it in, and we will fit our governor, which I'll need two hands for, so I'll come back in a minute. Okay, I've got the governor spring on. Got the little, little spring on here to stop it hunting and we've got the main throttle cable back to the governor or the engine attached as well. So I'll slide this on all the way and we'll fit up the fuel for the petrol. Right, carby is in place. Got fuel hooked up, governor's on, it moves freely. And the little carburetor is pushed all the way home onto the seal. So we'll get the air cleaner stuff on now and we'll crank it up and see what happens. Oop, nearly forgot one important thing choke handle. Choke handle needs to be fitted. Because that is held in place with the air cleaner housing. is that little tab there, whoops, that one there, my finger, sits on top of that choke plate, choke handle and holds it down. Air cleaner, main housing's on. We've got this guy here, which is, comes from the top of the timing cover and sucks all the gases out of the crankcase into the air cleaner. Probably an emissions thing, so I'll push that back in. Done. Okay people, there you go, new carburetor's mounted. I'll go try it on some gas and see what happens. Good news, it goes. I'll give you a demonstration. So, we've got, I did have to play around with my mixture screw a little bit because it was hunting on idle, but I just had to wind that out a bit and richen up the mixture for the LPG, it came right. Haven't tried it on petrol, but it goes well on LPG. So we'll crank it up. Now what I've got running on here at the moment is a load as a load is an old kettle. I think they're a 1500 watt element, 18 or 1600 watts. So this shouldn't have any problems driving that. So it's turned on. To start it, you need to turn on your gas, prime it with a little bit of gas. Now, if you listen, you'll hear some gas go in. Start for. A little bit more. Just like that. Bingo. 
I should point out the fundamental reason for fitting a dual fuel carburetor to my generator. So this is the petrol one. Petrol goes off. It doesn't last. I get 6-12 months out of it. And it goes off and if you try to use it and it's been sitting in your tank it just turns into kerosene. It goes through your carburetor and just gums it all up and doesn't go when you need it the most. So when life goes to hell in a handbasket and you need your hairdryer, LPG is good because it never goes off. It can sit in a gas bottle for 10 years. It might separate the butane and protein a little bit, but give it a shake, turn it upside down, away you go again. LPG goes or does not go off where petrol does. So this is the reason I have this on here. Because when I need it, there's always a gas bottle around and it will just work. That's it. That's the fundamental reason.